Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to share with you just a little bit of, of where I am. As Peter said, I stumbled into digital theology. Um, I pioneered a church over the last 20 years. And one of the things that for me is critical at the moment is that there is a contextual engaging with digitalization. 10 minutes before um, I was about to speak, the electricity stopped and um, we, I had a problem accessing um, the internet. So one of the, the biggest challenges that we have in the African continent is our access to technology as well as our access just simply to the internet. As you can imagine, um, being impacted by what happened in, the, in, the, in this global pandemic, when churches were stopped and people were not able to worship, um, it was an incredibly difficult time as the church. So, so we find ourselves in Africa, and particularly in Southern Africa, asking questions about what does it mean to be the church in the 21st century? A key aspect to how we move forward is how we participate and how we engage with one another. So just, it might just seem such a simple thing that there is digitally engaging on various digital platforms, not even in our seminary, are we discussing digitalization as a theology, um, Never mind the impact and challenges that we have when it comes to um, how we express ourselves on these various platforms. And that's interesting based on where we've come from as a country. South Africa, as you know, is experiencing tremendous challenges and find ourselves right in the, the front pages again of newspapers. And essentially, as a Methodist church, we believe in a christ healed Africa for the healing of nations. We've had a particular guiding document called the Kairos document, which has been a journey to, to form not only the theology, but the response of the church. And so as we've navigated these difficult spaces, we've also had an incredible visional statement that imagines breaking down borders that is a critical component of ecclesiology. And so the COVID pandemic has allowed that to actually happen in practical reality. This um, pandemic has forced us to ask very deep and reflective questions while we have not embraced digitalization as a platform. So what does it mean to contextually engage? We, we come to this forum and I, I've, I'm not too sure, but just having a look at the, the, those engaged even in this conference, there are not many representatives from Africa. So what does it mean to engage digital theology on a global platform? Because uh, digitalization and, and social media platforms are very often digital global platforms. So is Africa, even in the global south, as one of the components of, of um, the global south, are we in fact engaged? And how, how do practitioners engage theologians? And what is the theology of engagement and the methodology? I found the discussion on the VAR incredible. And, and as what would be a settler, um, obviously in the decolonized theological debates, being a white person, um, the indigenous theological debate, I am excluded essentially from, from fully appreciating and, and being involved in, in what many people discuss as Ubuntu. So essentially, as a white person engaging from that methodology kind of is alienating, but there is a new contextual theology that is, is prevalent both in, in, sec, in, in, um, in settler contextual theology as well as indigenous theology. So how do we find one another in these two spaces? As a practitioner and as a minister, um, starting a church, we, we, our story is fairly simple. We started a church in a post-apartheid South Africa um, that was really seeking to bring people of diversity together and, and particularly people that were divided racially, con contextually to imagine that the most divided space in South Africa's history happened to have been on a Sunday, which is still the reality, was really how, how, how we planted and pioneered a church. And, and even to use the word language of pioneering is, is slightly different. So I thought that, that, that the discussion earlier was interesting. Is there a global language that we all understand when we speak about digitalization? So ultimately, um, the 
you know, my, my interest at the moment is having established a church that became a fairly substantial, um, diverse church. We had um, in, our, in our standards just over a thousand adult worshipers and 400 children on Sundays, in, which was a fairly new church. It kind of, it happened. And, and what we didn't have was what was the theology that happened. And, and, and part of the South African struggle at the moment is to actually is to own language and find language that speaks to, to, to what has evolved in the last two and a half decades in the South African context. And the impact of secularization, Southern Africa kind of missed that um, in, in, in quite a substantial way, particularly in churches, um, whereas church life, Christian life, Christian expression is at the core of, of this, our sense of humanity. Um, so suddenly, with globalization and digitalization, that was beginning to change. So essentially, um, how do we forge innovation? Unfortunately, one of the, the challenges that we experienced in establishing this, this new church was using digital platforms alienated us from the rest of the denomination. Now I'm speaking very specifically as a, um, as a practitioner, but a, a key element into what was new or what was pioneering was that it, it began to alienate the existing institutional church. And so being pioneering, um, what did that mean? And being a new culture was emerging in the South African context. Again, the context itself was very divided very, very, um, from one another, racially as well as economically. And suddenly there was a, a diverse worshiping of people. And when I say diverse, I mean cross language, cross culture, um, cross race. And that was something very new in South Africa. It, um, and what we tended to see is that um, communities were easier blended, but churches took a whole lot longer. But suddenly, um, you, when, when, when we used um, digital platforms um, from Grace Point, it, it was people were suspicious of it. But with with the with the impact of the COVID pandemic, um, it has actually changed that platform dramatically. So suddenly, um, you know, principles that held this particular formative body together, which was like, you know, making sure that there was a clear vision, good collaboration, that there was an important integration, that that we, we used language and music to, to actually establish a church that focused on diversity, um, there was suspicion wherever we used innovation and digitalization. So, um, and, and that might not easily translate, but I think one of, one of the key aspects from a theology perspective is people are alienated depending on what access people have to technology. And, and the reality is technology costs a huge amount of money. And so the fact remains is that, that um, establishing churches um, on, on platforms, even like Zoom or Facebook or any so, social media platforms didn't allow people to actually properly engage. So during the pandemic, many people have not had access to church because they've just not had access to digital footprints. The thing that I loved about the, the, the topic of this conference um, was the disruption of digitalization. One of the key drivers in the global south are uh, the number of young people. And, and in as much as the institutional church um, seems to, to be needing to protect the traditional values and standards by which um, we exist, young people are breaking those barriers. And so what does it mean to have a third space? And can there ever be in the South African context, which is from such a diverse background, can there ever truly be a third space that is owned by all? Um, it, you know, is, is, will this new emerging third space, in fact, be a real and authentic space? How will we be able to form or get around the table, both as part of the African context, as well as theologians and practitioners, so that we can pioneer what it means to live between the seven days? Right now, um, and I'll conclude with this, uh, you, know, you know, the truth is that many churches have existed because ministers' children have been able to get hold of a, of a telephone and video record their, um, their parents and, and, and post those, those, those various recordings. I mean, the role of clergy versus camera person. Um, you know, what does it mean to actually embrace the on-demand, everyday, seven-day, um, a week church? So 
it's, I suppose, as a practitioner, um, finding common language, but getting around the table uh, and, and particularly remembering the rest of the continent needs to get around the table for us to, to forge innovation in the future. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, um, thank you for your presentation and for your paper as well. Um, we're going to hand over to Christian Schlenker now to, uh, to respond to your paper. Sure. Thank you, Jackie, for your video presentation and the summary just now. Um, the paper, The Time is Digital, is an enthusiastic plea for perceiving the digital continent, often described as obscure and dubious, as a third place of faith and worship practice. The paper cannot be appreciated in its entirety in my very unqualified five minutes because of the abundance of innovative approaches and thoughtful aspects, all of which would be worthy of your own response. This could not be more strongly expressed than by the concluding sentence, the church will always gather, but it also now gathers on many more platforms. Instead of reactionary and inert behavior, expressing activism that is context specific and bound to local communities and worship, worship practices seems plausible. This contextual wisdom is exemplified by the 10 observations from the regional context of the project church in South Africa that you just talked about again. Um, if I had to mention one aspect I find particularly noteworthy from your paper, it is that the open third space in the digital is integrated in a local contextualization. The fact that a spirit-led community feeds on the diversity of its members is in itself not a new insight. However, it is an important insight that is too often forgotten and the diversity of the members who make up the community also now includes everyday digital life. I have three questions that focus on the digital aspects of your presentation. First, do you see normative aspects that are intrinsic to the structures of the employed digital spaces? And if, how do they relate to the normative theologies you mentioned? Second, do you think that the new kind of the experience of time in digital world is important to how this new space and place signify? Third, how would you describe the interaction of both the local contexts on the one hand and the almost planetary digital platforms that can be explored? Allow me to elaborate a little. The paper um, shows with amazing attention to, to, to detail how the changing space of the digital demands a rethinking of physiology. This transformation is described in terms of an exploration because the traditional theologies were modeled on different situations. It is an exploration because it's ongoing. It's a journey with a destination. And I think it's rather brilliant that you admit that this destination might require an experimental phase a time to develop, to analyze, a time to search, and maybe even a time to give up. But it was not evident to me how the necessity of an agile and proactive church is different from any other normative ecclesiological account. Second, what surprised me about the title of the paper was what is meant by time in your paper. It is our time, and it's the high time for action. Our time is the time of the pandemic, time of digitalization, the time in which there could be a new reformation of the digital, but the time we experience is also digital. The digital platforms are not only different space, but also a different form of experiencing time. Keywords such as the simultaneity or the perpetual availability of content can be mentioned here, as well as that it's possible to literally fast forward viewing an on-demand service. Third, the digitally mediated time is also a time shaped by the medium. Platforms themselves are mostly not regionally specific. The paper emphasizes that the development of the churches in the digital space will also depend on the distribution of resources. To quote you, those with limited resources will be limited, those with unlimited resources will prosper, local churches will suffer if they don't act. In the availability of resources, on the one hand, an existing power distribution can be perpetuated and on the other um, hold the potential to set free dormant potentials. But it is important, as your paper stresses, to be wary of the situation. The power of space is not new and specific to digitalization, yet it brings forth an aspect that might apply equally to the digital space of worship. 
For if there is a power of space, it might be described as the power of a presence and absence. Only those who are present are part of a community. Only those who are able to be present are granted that presence. I think here the paper stresses an enormously important point. This kind of power often stands in the way of many expressions and the diversity of the church. And this barrier can be overcome with relatively simple means through digital participation. Yet the digital place is a mediated medium and it's not just access to broadband, which can severely be a physical barrier, but it's also always already the filtered reality that is present on virtually all digital platforms. This is true um, maybe of all social spaces, but also for the digital, that here um, it is to some degree reactionary, might be confirming a status quo. In a sense, I understand the quoted words as a warning, as a key problem that arises not only, but also in part to the global dimensions of digital platforms. And yet another reason to proactively shape the space on the church part. Those with limited resources will be limited. Those with unlimited resources will prosper and local churches will suffer. Thank you.